Oh, okay. Let f of x be uh, that. What's the limit as x approaches 1? Negative 1. Oh, this is a two sided limit. Okay, so is it approached from the left side and the right side? All right. Uh huh. Well, remember, remember, for a limit, for a limit to exist, the limit from the left has to agree with the limit on the right. So, uh, we gotta, that's how we evaluate this. We gotta take the limit from the left and uh, see if it's the same as the limit from the right. Get some music going, huh? Mm hmm? Um. Sweet. Oh, they think so too. <laughs> I'm gonna do the math wrong. Um. Let's turn that down. I don't even know you care. Alright. Uh, so, limit from the left, limit from the right. Uh, well, that's, that's how we do this. Whoops, that's pointing. So, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side. Well, that means we're plugging in values that are smaller, like this is approaching from things that are smaller than negative 1. So like on the number line, uh, if negative 1 is here, then like here would be negative 1.1. This is Hotel California. That's cool. Uh, sorry. So we're approaching things that are more negative than negative 1. Uh, so what what values? Uh, or I mean, which function, which uh, which piece of this piecewise function should we use? Well, we have to use this one, right? Because this allows for values that are smaller than negative one. So cosine will take the limit uh, as of cosine of pi x. All right, so how do we evaluate this limit? The first step, step one, is to uh, use direct substitution. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, maybe I'll move it here. I paused it now that the song's in the wrong spot. Um, so how do you evaluate a limit algebraically? Number one, try direct substitution. So whatever it says, like for x approaching something, yes, you, you plug that in. Okay. Um, so, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to plug in negative 1. What do we get? We get cosine of pi times negative 1, which is negative pi. Well, what is that? Uh, if I remember my unit circle correctly, and I do, because I'm a math teacher, um negative pi that means I go over this is pi so going backwards that make it negative pi what is cosine of negative pi cosine would be the x-coordinate of that point and it would be uh, negative 1 yeah it'd be negative 1 so this is negative 1 uh, my, my value is approaching negative 1 okay negative 1 that's what the limit is approaching. Okay, now now I have to check uh, the limit from the right side because if the limit from the right side is not negative one, then I would say uh, the limit, the two side limit, does not exist. So let's try that. Uh, okay, so if I'm approaching stuff uh, that's a slightly bigger on my number line, slightly bigger then negative 1, I would have to use this second function because it allows for x values that are bigger than negative 1. Uh, so I have to use x squared minus 2. That's what a lot of students have been you know, not understanding. Um, but yeah, there you go. So we have this. Uh, how do we evaluate it? Well, the first step is to try direct substitution. Uh, so Let's just plug stuff in. What do we get? Uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So we get 1 minus 2, and that is indeed negative 1. So, uh, the limit from the right and the limit from the left agree. They're both negative 1. So we can safely say that our limit, the two-sided limit, is negative 1. Um, if these were different numbers, then we'd have to say it's non-existent. 
but you do have to check both sides for for a two-sided limit as such as this you have to check from both sides what would the other steps be how do you evaluate a limit algebraically oh hopefully this doesn't get tagged for copyright stuff because of this song oh no oh I'm gonna pause it sorry no more music uh, yet okay so how do we evaluate the limit algebraically well try direct substitution um, I guess we should talk about indeterminate forms. Maybe that'll be the next video. Alright. Well, let's be done with this one.